of disloyalty, they became a victim in a crossfire. And it's very important that as we're taking time to teach, because when you come to the house of the Lord, what is happening is it's like a school. You learn. You learn. I normally don't do this during church service, but God said I should touch your eyes. So it's very important that we, we take notes. We take our pens and papers and not just take notes, but understand so when the word is coming forth you're telling God open the eyes of my understanding and are you enjoying the air conditioning are you yeah. so tonight I'm speaking on loyalty and it might be a four week series or five week series because um, when it comes to loyalty I'm very passionate about loyalty um a lot of people who are desperate in life do not understand the essence of loyalty. A lot of people who are desperate in life do not understand the essence of loyalty. And it's very important that you understand what loyalty is because there is a divine blessing in loyalty. If it wasn't for Elisha's loyalty, he would not have received a double portion. I was having a session with Minister Morgan and he said, so why did Elisha receive a double portion? I said, son, it's simple. Elijah did not complete what he was supposed to do. So God added Elijah's anointing to Elisha's out of loyalty. And out of this loyalty, Gilhazi received a curse. The one who was supposed to receive the blessing. He had served Elijah longer than Elisha. But guess what? It was Elisha that took the portion of the blessing because of loyalty. Gilhazi was the main man everybody would talk to. Before you talk to Elijah, you got to go through this man. Before, listen, you, if you don't talk to this man, you don't, you, don't, you don't get to meet him. But guess what? He was too familiar with the anointing. When you get too familiar with the unction, you could lose your grip. So Gil... Gilhazi was, was too familiar with Elijah. I think he thought they were schoolmates. So when Elijah was even in his unction and returned the gift, Gilhazi said, you don't know what to do with this gift. I'm taking it home. And Elijah cursed him. Perhaps he had worked for 20 years. Perhaps he had worked for 30 years. But one mistake, one mistake made Elijah hand the mantle over to Elisha. May you not lose your position. I need an amen here. I need a bigger amen here. May, may someone else not take over your hard work. You better shout amen. Some of you are working so hard, so hard, and then what would happen is somebody would take your hard work because of disloyalty. So tonight I've titled my message from, and this is series one, I've titled my message from slavery to royalty. Remember that? Loyalty is the top title and the subtitle tonight, series one, is From Slavery to Royalty. From Slavery to Royalty. From Slavery to Royalty. Turn your Bibles to Ruth chapter one. And I'm reading from the New International Version. I'm not saying it today because of invasion. I got to, my doctors are working around the clock to make sure I'm fine. I'm slightly a bit under the weather, but don't worry. I'm going to do the usual. And then Dr. Anna will deal with the rest. 
but she is working around the clock. So forgive me if I'm a bit slow on stage. It's just that they were working behind the scene before I got up here. Um, Ruth chapter 1, and I'm reading from 1 to 22 from the New International Version. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. So they didn't go to move there forever. They just went to live there because there was a famine in the land of Judah, which is in Bethlehem. Now, the man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion, or Kilion, or Kilion. Perhaps you're from London, perhaps you're from America, whichever way you can pronounce it your own way. They were Ephrathites if, if, if from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. So, she was left with her two sons. So after there was a famine and they moved to Moab, the man dies and he leaves his wife with two of their sons. Now when these sons grew up in Moabite, they now married Moabite women. So they had not gone back to Judea or, or Bethlehem yet. So they married Moabite women. One of the names of the ladies were Opa, and the other's name was Ruth. Opa and Ruth. Now, after they had lived there in Moab, please get the story very well. After they had lived there in Moab for 10 years, they lived there for 10 years. Both Malon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. So she left Bethlehem with three male. But she ended up without the three men. Six. When Naomi heard that heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing them food over here Naomi heard that there's food back in Bethlehem so Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had provided them with food she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there with her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to the two daughters-in-law, that girls, I want to go back home alone. So you go back, each one of you, to your mother's house Thank you for being my daughters-in-law, but as of now, I don't have sons. So may the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. And may the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another man so Naomi was willing to release them to another man because she had no sons then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and she said to her we will go back with you to your people 
So they both said to Naomi that, Mama, we, somebody say we, don't worry, it's fine, Mama. Opa and Ruth both wept, saying, Mama, Mama, it's okay. We're going with you. But Naomi said to them that return my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons? Would you become or, or who would become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me. Even if I had a husband tonight and then I gave birth to sons. Would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried at the age of 36 when they were born? It doesn't make sense, girls. I understand what you're doing, but no, my daughters. What you don't understand is it's more bitter for me than you. Now she turns the argument to God. She said, because the Lord has turned against me, his hands against me. And they wept aloud again. But look at something interesting that happens. Opa, amongst the two women, after crying, saying, I'm going with you, mama. I'm going with you. Suddenly tells the mama that Mwah. this is the kiss of goodbye. That means that she didn't mean what she was saying. She was only hanging around so she wouldn't look bad. So she kisses Naomi goodbye and says, okay, if you've released me, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Then she calls Uber. Then she goes. But whilst Opa was, <laughs> the Uber is here now. I don't even need to take my suitcase. I can go now. <laughs> Naomi clung onto the mother-in-law. And Ruth clanged onto the mother-in-law. Two young ladies in the family. I don't know who was older than who. The Bible didn't say it. But all I know is one said, okay, thank you for letting me go. And the other said, I'm not going. <laughs> Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. You go back with her. But Ruth replied and said, Mama, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Mama, where you will go, I am going. Where you will stay, I am staying. Mama, I'm a Moabite and you are from Judea. But your people are my people. Mama, we've been trained to worship gods. But from tonight, Mama, your God, the big G, will be my God. Do you remember or do you realize that Naomi said to Ruth that she's going to worship her gods, the small G? Idols. But Ruth tells Naomi that your God from tonight will be my God. Mama, where you will die, I must die. Ooh, what a powerful covenant. And where you will be buried, I will be buried there. Mama, I curse myself. By saying, may the Lord deal with me and be ever severe, or be it to me so severely, if even death 
separates you and I. What a strong covenant. This is what the little girl tells the mama. Then the Bible says, when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her to go back home. If you, the Bible belongs to you, circle determined. So Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her. So she stopped it. Now watch this. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because they came. I wonder why the town went to meet them. It meant that Naomi was a prominent person in that society. And the woman exclaimed that, can this be Naomi? Then this is Naomi's response. Don't call me Naomi. She told them, call me Mara. Because the almighty God has made my life bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why, do you, why are you calling me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune to me. So Naomi returned from Moab accompanied by Ruth the Moabite. Remember that the Bible always called Ruth the Moabite. Her daughter-in-law arriving in Bethlehem as the Bailey harvest was beginning their arrival time was very symbolic and prophetic so the bible is also specific that they arrived in bethlehem as the bailey harvest was beginning it was not when the wheat harvest was beginning or when the mango harvest was beginning but they arrived at a, a time a sensitive time that there was a harvest because if there is no harvest the timing will be wrong so the bible said they arrived at bethlehem as the bailey harvest was beginning so it needed harvesters and it needed workers it's very important that you walk sensitive in the order and in the steps of God spirit of the living God speak audibly through me tonight now read in the scriptures my eyes are now open actually because I could preach different topics from this scripture. There's so much one could pick out of this scripture. The first revelation I picked from this scripture was the fact that the men in that family died premature. The men in that family, as prominent as they are, they died too early. <laughs> Elimelech left Bethlehem of Judea to Moabite but he did not return or his body returned so he left and was buried in Moabite, Moab and his sons who left were not buried home they were buried outside home Mm. and like I always say this that when there is a curse it's the younger generation that suffers the most it's the youngest generation that the curse is more severe at least Elimelech saw his sons but his two sons never saw their children even though they were married Marlon and Kilion received an extreme severe curse because they 
could not see their sons. <laughs> they were married or had lived there for 10 years. But they could not have children. So at least Elimelech could fellowship with his kids. But his own sons died prematured. Any premature curse that is lingering on your head. May it be averted in the name of Jesus. Now, I don't want to step into my realms where I begin to decode mysteries. But, dare I think and say that the devil was after the male seed. From the tribe of Judah, where Elimelech is coming from, because further down the line, another relative called Boaz, who is from the same tribe related to Elimelech, takes the mantle. Could it be that just as the enemy was looking for Moses and God had to hide Moses because of destiny? The devil wiped out all the men in that family because he knows that through that seed, the lion of the tribe of Judah was coming out. Because Boabs gives birth to Obed, Obed gives birth to Jesse, and Jesse gives birth to David. So could it be that the enemy was determined to destroy the male seed. Woman, if your children or your sons are always ending up in problems and in prison, know that there is destiny on them. Lalo, you're not hearing me. If, if the, 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 the females from your family are beginning to manifest in a common pattern, begin to know that there is something that the enemy is trying to deny you of. But tonight in the name of Jesus... Any bloodline you're coming from, any bloodline you're coming from that the enemy is attempting to assassin, oh, let the blood of Jesus begin to speak. Somebody shout the blood. Somebody shout it louder, the blood. Do me a favor. I just saw my mother watching us. Please celebrate my mother. It's your bedtime, mommy. Go to bed. Please be seated. She just texted, powerful, powerful son, preach. <laughs> so dare I think and say that, why is the enemy attacking the male seed? Could it be that one of the boys could have given birth? Because it has to be Ruth. But Ruth has to find herself around a tribe, a man from the tribe of Judah. <laughs> it had to be Ruth, but Ruth could not conceive the destiny child in Moabite. It had to be from a particular crowd, tribe. Oh, let me teach tonight. Now, I wonder what triggers the curse. I don't know because the Bible didn't specify who died first. All the Bible says is they all died. But what triggered the curse that made them die premature? Hmm. Now, they married from the land of Moabite and lived there. And the two Moabite women they were married to were Opa and Ruth. Hmm. Unfortunately for us in life, some of us have Opas and Ruths. Oh. And the land of Moabite or Moab, I need to remind you of the history of that land. The Moabites or the Moab, the land of Moab is coming from Lot or Lot, Lot, Lot. 
And after Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot's daughters decided that in order to keep their seed, they must sleep with their father, get him drunk, and sleep with him. So the Moabites and the Ammonites are all from incest, cursed. That's why they were always involved in battles because they had no identity. So them moving from Judea to Moab is like moving from Buckhead to the worst area of Atlanta. But because there was a little food there, they wanted to survive there. I'm taking time to teach tonight. Tonight I'm not screaming. So right there and there, everybody that came out of Moab was cursed. And they knew it. They all knew it that once you are a Moabite, you're cursed. They knew it. Moving from Bethlehem to Moab was a big deal. But they could not, they had no choice. Please follow me carefully. Hmm. Now, Naomi's story is extremely painful. And that's what she told the girls. Because she's lost three men in her life. Naomi means pleasantness. It means pleasantness. And I could imagine how she looked. Mrs. Pleasant. She was that woman who would feed everybody in the community. She was that kind of woman that everybody loved. Hence her name, Pleasant. And remember that the Jewish tradition took names very serious. So she being called pleasant was that which she was, pleasant. But you would discover that her pleasantness did not stop the curse. Because of who she was associated with. Inasmuch as she was pleasant, because she was associated to a man. Who was carrying his own curse. She became a victim. Young ladies before you say I do. Check the track records. Before you carry anybody's name. Check the track records. Because their God will be your God. And their curse will be your curse. Switch that AC off. So her name is Pleasant, but she changed her name to Bitterness or Bitterness because of that which she was suddenly experiencing in the past five years. She, she named herself differently from what people knew her to be to what she's experiencing. Oh God. But from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, that's not how God created her to be. And some of you are carrying a name called glory, favor, but you've renamed your name to pain, defeat. I'm hated. I'm not loved. But today I pray that the son of David will change your name. She renaming herself would tell you <coughs> that she had thrown in the towel. She had given up in life. She was actually waiting for death to take her. I lost my husband. I lost my sons. There's nothing for me to live for. I'm done in life. And most of you have given up in life. You've thrown in the towel subconsciously. You don't want to hear anything because you've shut the door 
to giving it another try. But tonight, let the son of David visit you in the name of Jesus. She had become a widow and childless. A widow and childless. And in the Jewish tradition or in a lot of cultures, when you have a male seed, it's so important because a male seed always carries a seed. So when you lose a male seed, it's, it's a serious thing. So this that happened to her was very serious. Uh, uh, okay. Now she named herself Mara Bitterness because she thought she had been cursed. She had given up on God and herself. Then she says, let me go back home because I've heard. I've heard. I've heard that there's food back in my land. The two girls says, we're going with you. But she didn't know that one was for her. And one was not in her camp. So one was pretending to be in her camp. Pretending to cry. And most of us are surrounded by operas in life. Oh God, oh God. Now I'm starting to preach now. Hmm. Hmm. But they are quick to kiss you goodbye. Oh, the other day, Judas also kissed Jesus goodbye. The operas are good in kissing goodbyes. But they are the ones you eat with. They are the ones you sleep by. They are the ones you chat with, but they carry the spirit of opera. They are the first to betray you. Oh, they are the first to affirm that God didn't call you. Oh, they might pretend they are with you, but they are the first to join the camp of your enemies. Oh, they are the first to give your enemies an information concerning you. And most of the time, the information they give is not true, but because they were in your camp, your enemies know it. And because you were once upon a time a bit careless, that opera ah, took some information down. Yet they say, your God shall be my God. It's a lie. May God deliver you from operas. Oh God. <clears throat> a lot of churches have been destroyed by operas. Oh, no, no, Mokapa. They cannot stand the test of time. Every church goes through a period of test. Let me tell you, all the ones you see them move, they carry the spirit of opera. How do you bring a woman who is already down? Down. That's opera right there. You see, there are some people who can follow you, but are not following you. It's not every follower on social media that's a follower. And there's some people in life that will just follow you because they are following you to see what would happen to you that will bring you down and they will be the first person that are in your camp that will announce to the other people that it's done. Four years ago in Ghana, West Africa, you know, Africa, they take um, elections, presidential elections very serious because one wants to stay on for years. <laughs> and one political party had a meeting. They had a meeting, like a closed door meeting with only five people by the time they stepped out their opponent their opponent had heard everything in the meeting 
who was the opera in there that was behaving to be loyal but was an agent there are some people around you walking around you there are some friends even sisters or brothers who envy you so much but they are pretending your bloodlines they are pretending your family but they wished you were dead they wished you were destroyed they are the spirit of operas but tonight I came to say uh, let thunder fire them you know what happened to Naomi you know she's down and out yet you were the first to kiss by and call the Uber you were the first to announce to everybody on social media that it is well with you pretending that they got your back uh, they go shut up uh -huh. but they are actually happy that you are where you are they're happy that you're homeless they're happy that you lost that child they're the first to tell the world that the baby is gone and oh my god baby tommy rest in peace oh my god and then loads of love kiss 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 they are operas you didn't want the world to know what had happened to you but they pretended they were with you just to let the enemy know that they won but tonight any enemy who was behaving as a friend let the lord god almighty deal with them somebody clap your hands and shout amen operas in life are always looking for opportunities to walk away listen i when I go into a covenant of friendship with you, my covenant with you is we can fight. We can disagree. We can argue. But we can never walk away on each other. We can choose not to talk for three days. It's fine. But we both know that we're like the teeth and the tongue. We can't live with each other. So eventually we'll fix ourselves. But the operas are waiting for opportunities to step outside the boat. Oh, I don't know who I'm preaching to. Ah, an opera could be a spouse sleeping by you. Because a lot of people marry out of emotions and not out of most of you you're not in competition with your neighbors you're in competition with your spouse your wife feels she's better than you your husband feels he's better than you you don't need any prayer topic outside your own prayer topic is by your bedside can i preach tonight oh god the operas in life are so deceiving oh god they they have the right word to say they can tell you something and you will feel so good about yourself but they will never stand with you i'm preaching tonight kadibado operas operas have phd in disloyalty and betrayal And they work on their professorship after PhD. You lost the house, you lost that business, you lost that car, you lost that contract. And an opera will never stay with you. They will blame you for your loss. Oh, you're not hearing. Maybe you don't have those kind of people. But even if you don't have, wait, they're coming. They will blame you for your loss and say, see what you've made me do. Oh, may God deliver you from upper. The unfortunate thing, Lady J, is in your church, there's an upper. In your business, there's an upper. In your marriage, there's an upper. In your life, there is always an opera but here's the good news may god shut their mouth and their ears 
their wishes will never come to pass if you believe it shout I believe Opus will laugh with you but they will never cry with you they will laugh at the party they will dance with you but they will never cry with you oh god shadaba <laughs> the interesting thing about these operas is they have a way of warming themselves into your heart they, they know what to say they know how to say it and when to say it Operas often have everything you need in life. They're the assumed besties. But please remember this that Papa said this that people are in your life for a reason and a season. So careful which information you give out. Those who are for a season, they come in seasons and go in seasons. And sometimes the breakup in seasons might not be a comfortable one careful which information you release those who are in for a reason they're, they're permanent seasons come and go the operas in life are always in your life for a season may God open your eyes to see those who are in your life for a season and may you not become vulnerable around them for them to hold information that they could use against you. Can I talk to somebody? But when it comes to Ruth, she was a different Moabite. Every person from the land of Moab knows that we are cursed. Like the Samaritan people. That's why Jesus went and encountered a Samaritan. And the Jews saw it as an error. But when it came to the Moabite, the history is that they are from an incest and they are cursed. But Ruth, who was cursed, who knew where her bloodline was coming from, was determined to change the narratives. Oh my God. She was determined not to remain broke. Not to remain cursed. She was determined that every child that will come from her womb will end up experiencing the blessing of God. So the Bible said when Naomi discovered that Ruth was determined, she stopped. And Ruth knew that in order to achieve and break the curse she must be faithful she must be loyal there is no way a Jew would come down to Moabite so if a Jew comes down to Moab then you must seize that opportunity to connect to destiny you're not getting it you get it tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Ruth knew that they cannot leave Moab to come to, to, to Bethlehem. It's like leaving Mexico to come to America. That's how I could equivalent it. So for America to come to Mexico and for an American to go back from Mexico to America with an American passport, Ruth knew that this was her chance to come out of the curse because every border that they will cross, the American will show her and tell them that I'm with her, it's okay. Ruth was determined to step out of that 
curse. Yes, my grand grandfather may I be, Lord. Yes, I might have come from an ancestor, but tonight my eyes are open and I'm willing to break this curse. I'm willing to break this jinx. I'm coming out of this curse. I'm not going to die like Opa. I'm not going to fail like all the women here. I am coming out whether a widow whether whatever it would take i'm stepping out know me your god is my god where you will die i will die i'm not staying here get me out get me out of this curse Oh, they lived in Moab for 10 years. Come, baby girl, come over. Come, I love you. Come over. Come, come, come. You come as well. You're going to play Naomi. You're going to play Ruth. I'm the two girls. The two girls, Upper and Ruth, all lived with their mother in law. But one was observant, and the other was carnal. That's the problem about life. One was asking questions and the other was speaking when she was not supposed to speak. Ah, one and the other was still worshiping idols. So she was looking for her God. The story changer. She was looking for her God. The game changer. She was looking for the God of Naomi. Even though Naomi had given up on her God, she knew that this God can change your destiny overnight. So she said, I'm not leaving you. Your God shall be my God. Where you will die, I will die. Mother, where should I go? I ain't going nowhere. Mother, I'm staying with you. Naomi said, I don't have nothing to give you. She says, I know, but there is something I've observed. Your hands are blessed. Your voice is blessed. When you speak, you speak in wisdom. Mother, if you leave me here, I'm gonna end up cursed. So mother, take me along. Mother, drop me along. If you are broke, I am broke. If you have nothing to eat, I am eating. Mother, I wanna be loyal. Mother, I wanna serve you. Mother! What she didn't know, turn me up and help me, was that she needed strength. Sometimes when you know you are down and out, you don't need people to tell you you were down already. That's what Opa did. Naomi knew she was down, but she didn't need an affirmation that she's down. So she says you're down anyway. Ain't nothing good coming out of you. So tada bye. My Uber is in in the next one minute. But Ruth tells Naomi, even if you are down, we're down together. I'm your home girl. Some of you, you need a roof in your life who cuts your back. No matter what, if you got a dollar, she shares it with you. If she got a dollar, she shares it with you. That is loyalty. That is loyalty in your times of distress in your times of depression you need a roof who will say you are down but you are not out you are down but you are not out as they were walking she will remind the mother 
Do you remember when you cooked this way? But what she didn't know was she was training him to meet a boss. What she didn't know was she was working on him. You need a Ruth in your life. And a Ruth needs a Naomi. Oh God, tonight may heavens visit you. May your destiny help her, your destiny walk her. May they walk with you. May they hold your back when you fall. May they catch you. May they see your worst and still say, Rise up. The world awaits you. Shut it up. Loyalty. Ruth is a perfect candidate of loyalty. Oh my God. Ruth looks young. Permit me to use the word sexy. Oh, but she refused to walk with her age mates. She wants to sit by a matured mother who will teach her the ways and the works of God. Because even though she was cursed, something inside her kept telling her that you are great. You're not going to end up where they ended up. Something inside her kept on telling her, be sensitive, be sensitive. Somebody might be down and out, but don't write them off yet. Be sensitive, watch them, watch them. Watch them, watch them, watch them, watch what they say, watch what they do, watch them listen, watch and observe, you will see that wisdom will begin to speak. Naomi said, you just gave me power, I got something in my pocket that I gotta give you. Come baby girl, stay with me here, don't move, stay right here, you just fixed me up, I'ma fix you up, hold on Ruth, do as I say, listen to me, your loyalty will get reward, Ruth, Ruth, you've been a trash, but we're gonna turn that trash up to treasure uh, uh, Ruth uh, you've been a mess uh, but we're gonna turn the mess uh, into a message uh, wait for me uh, wait for me uh, wait for me uh, cook cook put the sauce in this way keep quiet baby girl let me teach you uh, keep quiet and watch me uh, Take this cut bonnet, take the onions, take the tomato, stir it together. This is what the men in my family, they love. You lost it with my son, but I'm gonna give you another son. And he, he is carrying the lineage of Jesus Christ. Your loyalty will pay off. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, baby girl. You a slave girl. You a slave. Normally the Moabites are slaves. They do the donkey job. Because we don't respect you anyway. You're coming from incest. Nobody respects you, but I'm gonna change the narrative. Uh, somebody give me a scarf. Give me a scarf. Uh, because you are not going to walk in your identity. You will walk in my identity. So when they get to the town, they said, is that Naomi? She said, don't call me Naomi. 
called me Myra, for the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. Oh God, what are you talking about? Where you been, baby girl? Who is this girl? Where is she coming from? Oh people, you don't know what this girl done for me. She's had my back. Naomi began to advertise the girl. You don't know what she done for me. If it's not for this girl, I would have been dead. Anybody that meets this girl say thank you. Who is this girl? Where is she from? She's a Moabite. Oops. Oh, but it's fine. Do you want to see how pretty she looks? Oh my God. But what happened now? She taught her the language. She taught her how the women walk. So yes, yeah, start walking. As she's walking, well, she might be a Moabite, but she's behaving like a Jew. We could work with that. You need a Naomi in your life. <laughs> That will teach you the secrets of where you gotta be. Oh, the reason why your destiny is delayed is Naomi is not there to show you how it works. But watch this. The Bible says it was the time of the, the harvest, the daily harvest. Remember that I said it was timely because the owner of the farmland was in need of people now she needed a job to take care of her so she tells her that i'm going to walk and pick up but everything you've taught me i'm gonna apply it so she goes not in arrogance but she goes and she serves then boaz comes and says who who is this girl? Who? Shut out of Osha. Who is this girl? Some of you, you might be gifted, but you need a platform to advertise your gift. Oh God! So all the men were looking at the girl. And the owner, the CEO, was also looking. So his staff had to sit back because boss. <laughs> boss man, they like come. Boss man said, young lady, where are you coming from? She said, my mother-in-law is Ruth. Oh, I have heard about your story. You were the one that helped her. How did he hear? Naomi had advertised her. Naomi had told them that if it's not for this girl, ooh, boy said, don't work for anybody. Come and work for me. A slave, a maid servant, a nobody. A rejected is now overseeing she's the chief maid but that doesn't end there Boaz had to let her go through process but she wouldn't get to where she is if it wasn't for her and she wouldn't release the miracle if it wasn't for her loyalty ladies and gentlemen there are people standing with your miracle your husband might be your miracle your pastor might be your miracle your wife might be your miracle but if you don't remain loyal if you keep betraying they will give it to somebody else Boaz normally wouldn't go to work in the morning he's the CEO but forget me my seat for some strange reason get me my seat son for some strange reason he want to take the books himself oh God may God put you on the heart of those who will favor you hey 
dance so. Huh? Come, how many girls are working today? Five. Huh? Make sure that that girl is working in front of me. <laughs> I'm checking stocks, but make sure you put her right in front of me. Go tell her to work right here. I need inspiration. Let her work right here. Let her start working. Make sure she's eating. I see favor coming to somebody. Oh, give her a bigger portion of where I'm sitting. I need to see clearly my son. While she was working, favor. While she was working, Naomi was praying that God, she's been loyal, God, she's a mess, God, favor the girl, Oprah leaves, Ruth stays, Naomi says, I gotta make sure that you don't fail, but I said, young girl, come over, Come over. Are you married? Hey, hey, ask her. Who is she with? She's not married. Give her a bigger portion of where she has to work. Enlarging her territory. How many did she collect? Five. Wait, five? Five? Come, come. No, no, you stay here. You, she got five? Ah, so she's going home with five? You, collect ten. Collect ten and give to her. Make it fifteen. Let her go home with fifteen. <laughs> Hurry up, you don't got her. I'm watching. I'm going to fire you. You're playing with your boss property. Hurry up. Young lady, go and give it to Naomi. Go take care of them. I want to marry this girl, but I don't know how to do it. Who is next in line to marry this girl? I can't sleep. She came to lay here and ever since she left in the night quietly, I've been restless. But who told her what to do? The old lady still got the tricks. Old mama still, she might be old but she knows the deal. She said before the dawn of the day, leave. Oh God, don't let no girl see, leave. Leave him in suspense. Oh God, I feel God here. I feel God here. So he, Boaz knows that he got to trap this guy and make it look like he doesn't want to be with this one because he knows he wants her and it works and then he marries her and then he puts her on the sea from trash to treasure from nothing to something the one that she used to report to her now reports <laughs> something is about to change in your life something is about to switch in your life oh my god from slavery to royalty you can call me a slave but I'm your boss they give birth to Obed Obed give birth to Jesse 
David comes out and Jesus the son of David that means that Jesus is actually related to Lot the incest and Rahab the prostitute He's the God that can take nothing and make something out of nothing. Oh, he's the God that can remold and refix. Oh God, tonight I came to tell you that it takes a Naomi to break you through. But before she will break you through, she needs to see your loyalty. Her counsel carries weight. Your Naomi might be your husband, your wife, your friend, your sister, or your pastor. Sometimes the relationship might not be too good and you might get hurt. But know that they need to connect you to a Boaz. The problem the church has and the battle that the church is fighting now is loyalty. That's why most pastors, even though they know that their children don't deserve the mantle, they would rather give the mantle to their children than to give it to an outsider because they cannot trust you. man of God can build a church with many branches and one young man that he picked will turn against him so they're afraid to give the mantle over because you will wipe them out Ruth's loyalty moved there from the kitchen to the throne and when she had the baby she gave it back to Naomi and Naomi said now I am laughing so Naomi had an agenda and she worked it out through her your God shall be Jaden, there are places I can take you to, but I need your loyalty. That no matter what, I'll never turn my back on you. There's one phone call I can just make, but I need your loyalty. next level could be in the mouth of somebody it could be in the re just one recommendation anybody that helped me in my life I've never turned my back on them I could be in a stadium full of people and somebody security will be make will be pushing them back and I'll see them from afar and I said let them come in leave them and they'll say, do you know him? I said, yeah. We were together 10 years ago. Let him come in. Thank you. Most of you, those who bent their backs for you, you stepped on and kicked the staircase. Do you realize that she gave the baby back to her? As a thank you. So she's waiting for the miracle to come back. But most of you take the miracle and you shut the door. If Opa was sitting there, Opa would have kicked her out. Most of you daughters-in-law have turned against your own mothers-in-law. Most of you sons-in-laws 
I'll turn against your father in laws. I don't talk to her. I don't talk to him. Really? Before he said, Mama, I want to marry her. Mama said, You have my blessing. You got in and put on the ring, kicked Mama out. You just cursed yourself. You're an opera waiting for something to use to walk out. Naomi's never keep records of wrongs. Oppers will always remind you what you did four years ago. Oppers are always seeking for times of revenge. Oppers don't forgive. You can be good to an opera for 10 years and make a mistake for one day. And everything you did means nothing. Oh, listen. Operas are not stable mentally. And that's the problem with a lot of CEOs. Listen. I can tell Joy, when you start, before you started singing here, you were not as confident as you are. You were not. That's how you used to start singing. I remember. But now see how you hold the mic and all I want is for you. So if you get a big contract, you must almost tell them that Rock Hill is my home. Because the, the person that gave you the platform to rehearse every day, Elliot, I belong to you. Yeah, they're good churches, but how many churches have these instruments that you have every Sunday? You're not doing me the favor, you're doing you the favor. I should charge you for using my social media. You've had followers that never followed you when you were so really and truly, you should be paying me if you understand this principle. You will learn to be grateful. And that's the principle I've always. I might not give you money, but what I will give you is more than money. I've seen Minister Morgan. He walks differently now. My son talks differently now. The other time he shaved his beard, I said, son, stop shaving your beard. Americans have beard. Keep the beard. I want you to have a different look. Oh, yeah. Are you following me? That's why I'm keeping everybody's before and after pictures. I have everybody's before. And then I'll show you after. So when you're black, I say, hey, 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 come. It's true. Before you help anybody in life, eh? take their before picture because one person is different when they don't have money and when they, are, they have money they are different people are you hearing me loyalty is royalty loyalty no amount of money can Put, you can you cannot quantify loyalty. That is what ended up her up on the throne. Are you loyal to your church? Are you standing with your church? Are you fighting for your church? Or you're part of those social media vulnerable people, jobless people. If you have a job, you don't go on social media. If you have a job. You, no, 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 no. Most people who comment on social media are jobless. Oh, yeah. They have no life. Are you, are you hearing me? Some of you are here by your opus. But don't worry, I got something for you. Don't worry. I got something for you. It's just one prayer. Don't you see that every six months an upper shows up? Oh, don't worry. Oh, don't worry. I, I got something for you. 
It's just one prayer. You pray. Upper will expose herself. She. You just have to set the trap. They'll fall in. And then they'll blame you and say, see what you made me do. May you be that roof to somebody. Can they trust you with their keys? Can they trust you with their office keys? Can they trust you with their staff and say take over? And would you do things diligently without stealing, without robbing? Would you do it knowing that there's no camera on you but you're passionate? Most of you pretend too much. You think I don't hear through the cameras in this church? I hear everything. Every camera here watching you hears. I, I hear in my office. Most of you, you don't pray when I'm not around. When you see me around, you're an upper. At the old place, we had an upper. When I told the pastors in training to go pray, I think she knew when I was passing by the door. The moment I passed by, Opa. <laughs> I haven't mentioned anybody's name. Oh. <laughs> he who the cup fit, let them wear it. <laughs> I pray that may the Naomi's of life locate you. At least in your life, you need one loyal friend, one loyal sister. One loyal partner who would still look at your faults and say it's a default. Don't worry, let's go. Oh no. Trust me. Trust me. You need one person that'll say, Go to bed. I got it. Let me do it. Don't worry, go to bed. I got it. Go to bed. You need one up, um, roof. And out of your loyalty, you will receive the biggest miracle. A stranger, an illegal immigrant. It's like Donald Trump's wife. She's not an American, but she's your first lady. You might not like how she speaks, but you cannot move when she's speaking. You don't like her, but you have to watch her. If you make a move, security will kick you out. That's how Ruth ended up at. You might not like me. I believe the girls there, even those who were seven, were giving her eye. But she know they see. She know they see. <laughs> I see you. I know see you. May God bring you one loyal person. That even when you're down, he or she believes in you. When she was down, she encouraged her. Do you know when, what it means? That at your lowest point, somebody tells you, I'm following you. Don't leave me here. I'm go Do you know? What it did to her, it gave her strength. Tonight you're going to pray two prayers. God, let me never be disloyal. Help me. Give and it shall be given unto you. Luke 638. If you love the ministry of Dr. Sonny Badu and would like to support Rock Hill Church, kindly send your donations online by visiting our website, www.therockhillchurch.org, and click the green Give Now button at the top right-hand corner. You can also give on PayPal to the Rock Hill Church at gmail.com or on Cash App, dollar sign Rock Hill Church. 
with phone number 404-247-6460. God bless you as you give, for it is more blessing to give than to receive. Acts 20.35